You either caught the trend while it was hot or let it pass by. Skateboarding was very popular back in the day, but it stuck around for a much longer time compared to skating alternatives. BMX biking might stand the test of time like skateboarding did, maybe in landscapes too, but Healy's did not do that well. Another ridiculous alternative was soaping, a form of transportation only the most seasoned 90s kids are aware of. Skateboarding, like inland skating or BMX biking, always seemed intriguing to me since all the cool people did it. But then after trying to skateboard once and falling on my arse more than just one time, I decided it's best for my health to not even try. And hey, I do not regret it. No one skates in my area. And if someone does, everyone secretly wishes to see them fall off the board just to laugh at them. Skate parks are mostly vacant and many skate shops are mostly just visited for brand clothing. So here in Germany, skating is more or less a niche sport and for many, merely a relic from the 90s. But I personally still find it exceptionally cool to this day. Many skating games have come and gone over the years, many of which were arcade in nature. But the franchise that launched skating into the stratosphere was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. The series produced many entries in very quick succession. Combined with the many Pro Skater spin-offs and copies, the market became over saturated in a small time window and the games didn't portray skating at its most genuine form. Tony Hawk's made you chain together insane trick chains in quick succession with singular button presses. While entertaining, skating in those games seems effortless, easy, floaty. When Skate released, it shook up the scene. Analog controls mimicking the skateboards and skaters' movements, believable skating physics and ragdoll crashes presented a side to skating that was rarely explored in video games. The first time I ever played Skate, it reminded me of the first time I stood on a skateboard. It is hard to navigate around, you don't really know what you're doing and you will plant your face right into the pavement more than just one time. Over time, you will learn more tricks. You will become more confident navigating the world and might actually start winning some races and competitions. The skate franchise suffered a similar fate to Tony Hawk's. With more and more titles releasing in quick succession, it oversaturated its own market, resulting in subpar sales for Skate 3, which in turn resulted into a not-so-happy electronic arts. The game became extremely popular again thanks to YouTube though, and now we have hordes of fans hoping for Skate 4 to come out. Yet it maybe never will. But what makes Skate 3 special? How did it get the reputation of being the most realistic skating game out there? And most importantly, what makes this game so much fun? The animations of Skate are all motion capture, which combined with animation blending techniques and smooth transitions into and out of ragdoll animations makes for a believable skating experience. The player characters' animations and the NPCs' animations look realistic, and they are interactive with each other, meaning that collisions happen all the time and every single one of them looks unique. The movements of the skater's body directly influences the direction and speed the skateboard is taking. The flips, ollies and carves look and feel real, because the skateboard looks like it is affected by physics simulations rather than just playing through pre-made animations. I think that the tricks are partly pre-animated, but it is not noticeable since the skateboard and the skater riding it are affected by momentum and physics. So if a board lands at the wrong angle, you are gonna bail. If the board hits the rail, you are gonna bail. If the board... you get the idea. The stance of your skater also changes depending on how fast he rides the skateboard and if he rides uphill or downhill. The subtleties in the animations, paired with the blending together of tricks and ragdolls, aids the player in immersing themselves into the world of Skate 3. The first time I played this game with headphones on, I was quite surprised of its sound fidelity. Cruising around the city is nice when you hear reverberation filters, the wind, your skateboard rolling over the asphalt, and the sound of your body slamming onto the ground. Anything from the wheels of your skateboard to the foot pressing against the ground and to the cloth sliding across the floor sounds believable. The game features stereo sound and it seems a little three-dimensional too. When grinding rails and landing tricks, you can also get rewarded with a satisfying when in a combo chain with a times 3 multiplicator, every trick you perform emphasizes the sounds of the skateboard flipping in the air. If there is one thing that was done flawlessly in this game, it is stimulation. No matter what the player does, it is fun. Crashing is fun. 
combo chaining is fun. And even just cruising around the city without any aim can be fun. And that simply due to the sounds and animations. In Skate 3 there also are many environmental sounds. Soundscapes simulate the urban environment the game is set in, with a constant background drone, distant traffic, birds and other miscellaneous sounds that bleed into the game's environment. That paired with the reverberation filters and stereo sound makes the game a joy to listen to. And the soundtrack? It ain't that bad either. It doesn't matter how good the game sounds or looks like, the controls must be spot on. Skating around the world is as simple as steering with the left analog stick and pressing or holding either the square or X buttons. The square button controls the left leg, while the X button controls the right leg. The left and right triggers control the left and right arms respectively, and the right bumper is used for holding onto things, punching pedestrians and doing some more special tricks. The actual tricking is mostly done with the right analog stick, with which the player gestures the movement of the skateboard to initiate the trick. Once you get more and more acquainted with the controls, you will be able to grind, flip and race with confidence and less and less crashes. The controls are responsive and once you get the hang of the control scheme, it will be much easier to pull off more basic tricks. Due to the more complicated control scheme, it is less and less easy to chain together insane tricks in quick succession, like in the Tony Hawk series. Since physics and momentum are simulated in Skate 3 as well, the game features a steep learning curve. Most of the game consists of a player evaluating if they can pull off a trick in a specific time window with the momentum they got at that time. With a lot of practice, the player could learn to execute specific tricks with better accuracy, in a cleaner way, and could even maybe learn to chain the trick into a combo line. Skate 3 wouldn't be the same without the wonderful world design of the city. Port Coverton is a city that embraces skateboarding and the city feels lively due to the pedestrians roaming the street, skaters cruising around the streets and cars speeding throughout the city. Around the town you can find various spots filled with ramps, grind rails and other various obstacles to trick through. The city can be easily broken down into three sections. The downtown area, the industrial district and the college campus. The city offers anything a skater would want. Locations to race in, skate parks and a whole bunch of structures and objects that can be repurposed for an improvised grind rail or ramp. The player can also choose to walk and run around the city to move objects around, setting themselves up for a stunt or simply to mess around with the pedestrians that are roaming around the districts. The player can choose to participate in tournaments, races and other various skating activities, but is never forced to. Theoretically you could play the game without caring for any tournaments and challenges and still have a lot of fun. You could also compete in the challenges to learn new tricks and to get more and more comfortable with your skating skills. You could also spend the entire game running around the streets while clobbering people with your skateboard over the head. Every time you complete or fail a trick, NPCs in your surroundings will react to your actions, either congratulating the player or making fun of the player. Skate as a game almost feels like finger skateboarding on your desk. You can pick and choose what to do and where to do it at any time. You can decide to take it seriously or just play it casually and if you want to, you can even build your own little skate park. Skate 3 is an excellent sandbox open world game which allows you to do anything straight out of the box. Most games do not offer that kind of freedom, especially nowadays in the age of microtransactions, pre-order bonuses and paywalled content. I myself haven't tried out building my own skate parks yet because frankly, I do not need to. I am having a lot of fun with the world that was designed for us to enjoy by itself and I like to play the game seriously or sometimes casually while I do something else. If you own a PS3, Xbox 360 or Xbox One, I highly recommend you to get this game. There aren't any other skating games on the market that match the goals that the Skate series achieved nor the quality that was put on the table. Skate can be any game you want it to be. A casual sandbox game to play while listening to a podcast, a competitive game to play against your friends or NPCs, a game to learn every single trick to perfection in, or well, a game in which you just mess around in. And for that reason, this might still be the best skating game out there right now.
Hey, Chicken here, and thanks for watching this video. This is the first video that I ever made on a console game, since I bought a capture card recently, so the budget of this video roughly sits at around 100 bucks. I hope you enjoyed this first console video, and if you did, then please feel free to share around my videos, or maybe you want to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.